A warm welcome back to Spectacle Island for episode 17 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 1.41, I've been busy, off camera. Field 10 is now cleared and it's cleared of straw swath. Uh, the harvester I've brought back, the header can probably do with some repair actually, but this definitely needs a bit of repair work and it needs a wash. I have also bought a new, uh, another egg, I say a new, another egg pallet because I needed one. The other one fills up fairly quickly. I thought having two there would be a brilliant idea. So we'll get this outside. I bought the new header that is up here. It's been delivered. That's over there. So what I'm going to do is leave the header there. We'll get on to repairing that later on. I'm going to take the Land Rover down to the docks to pick up the new egg pallet. And I'll put two there so I can leave that a lot longer. All the feed areas need a bit of a clean out, in all honesty. As far as our straw pallet production goes, Let's clean that for a minute. I'm on the fence. Uh, not just metaphorically. I was actually on the fence. What about those monster trucks yesterday? I thought about getting one for Spectacle Island. <laughs> it's, it's a nice terrain. It might be a bit of a giggle, but I'm not too sure how well that will go down. Now, as far as yeah, straw production goes, I've got a little bit on the pallet here, but not quite enough for another full pallet. And I've got all of these. I have been busy. We've got quite a few. Now, I also did a test, because I thought what I could do is just lift these up, double stacked onto the trailer, take them to be sold. Now, I thought, well, I do have these reusable pallets that take everything, 4,500 litres each. So 45,000, I think I've got 10 on there, right? Yeah, 45,000 litre capacity. So I lifted one of those up over here and it does fill directly from the pallet. So rather than spend ages trying to load them up nice and neatly, I suppose it does kind of negate the fact I've spent ages. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, when you think about it, I could have just pelletized them using the pelletizer and then just poured them into there. That's a good point. That's going to take them as loose, isn't it? Rather than pallets. Yes, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that as it is. Um, otherwise, I might as well just... <laughs> Just take them from there as pellets and pour them straight into there. Why am I going through the point of doing all of this? Ah, <sighs> great thinking. Well done. So anyway, got quite a few there. Um, hay is what I'm turning my attention to now. It's going to start raining. So we'll see how we go. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab the JCB anyway, just because I love it. All the fields have now been fertilised where they can be. I've taken my old mowers down to the docks as well. So I'm going to drive down the Land Rover to get the egg box. I'm not going to bring that back up just yet. I'm not even sure where I'm going to park this for the time being. doesn't really matter. I can park it wherever we like. I didn't think about using this for the mowing. Well, use this for the mowing and then use the New Holland for pulling the Primos. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'll come. I'll do the Land Rover a bit later on. Oh, it's all shallow. I don't know. You know what, the best thing to do is... Yeah, I'll take this down to the docks. This, sh mm, uh, this should be alright for the mowing setup, although the mowing setup is going to be one of those unwieldy ones. I'm going for uh, one pass 
hay swath. Now, doing one pass hay, you know, it's been done, but, you know, and so is the kind of swathing thing. The mowers I've got now do swath, but they don't link together as a, as a singular three unit or three mower setup. Whereas the ones I'm going to get do. Now, I mentioned these a while back, and it's the Novacat 301 Plus X8 Varia by Anthu. And someone said they had them, couldn't get them to hook up, or somebody said they had them but couldn't get them to swath. Now, if you get the standard in-game ones, which I think are 301 and X8, they don't swath, but the modded ones by Anthu do. So it's well worth having a look. Now, again, that's one of those mods that as soon as I found them, I kept them. I've never uninstalled that mod. So there's always that risk of the list of mods that I have got that I never get rid of. The ones I always have installed because I, I tend to use them quite a lot on different... Um, let's plays potentially there's a risk oh yeah that was I think what I'm here sorry Bear and Papa I know I kind of and you'll see I've so I put the the pallet cell point the pellet pallet cell point down here at the store because the store is being revamped funny story with this Bear and Papa was messaging me a while back and he sent me a picture of his one and he'd put it over here then when the map updated this was on here and Bear and Pap watched the map, map tour, or the update video, and was, he panicked. He said, I can't believe Jim's put stuff there, and that's exactly where he'd put his pellet cell point. When he did the update and came on, he was so lucky. His pellet cell point was just here, just outside of where Jim had made the, the changes, the alterations on here. So, a bit fortuitous, I would say. I've lost my thread about what I was saying. I do that all the time. I do it a lot. Thank you to everyone that's joined the Discord server. Absolutely fantastic. We're up to 253 plus members. It's only been kind of properly live for a couple of days. That's amazing. I'm absolutely loving it. What I also love, and I've got my, my PC open to my right. I'm just on my Mr. Silly Peeps channel now. And what is great... Oh, let's just click on it. Why is that not? There we go. There's a section on here... Because they've got all these different sections, which I love. And we've got helpline and support is one of them. There's Mr. Silly P isms, which I like. So when you're a member on there, you can go on there. And anything that I say a lot, like undulations and those kind of things, you can go in there and you can you can put down any of my isms. But the guys that have set the set it up, the Discord, have put um, the helpline and support channel in it. And it's the mental health one. And I absolutely love that. That is such a brilliant idea with all the stuff with the various lockdowns and the situation around the world and just generally about people just kind of not talking about things when they could be or should be so there's a whole load of links there to, to various different hotlines and helplines and, and disorders and contact pages and it's brilliant so you know if you're looking for any help advice or you know there's a whole load of stuff and then also it says don't be afraid to reach out whether you're admins or friend with someone on the community no one should be alone um, I, I, I just think that's absolutely brilliant that made my day when I went on and I saw that it's absolutely fantastic so there's a whole lot of stuff so if you're not on the Discord server yet jump on there um, and it's one of those situations that it becomes a bit of a kind of a bit of a beast that you don't control yourself because I can only be on there when I'm not recording when I'm not editing um, when I'm not doing 101 other things that I do but then when I go to bed it seems to be that the um the channel just lit up the discord server and the people just chatting well i say all night for me it's all night but for you guys it's not is it because depending where you are in the world it's probably middle of the day for you guys so it was um it's amazing i love it thank you again to those guys all the work they're doing in the background that people just don't see um i can't thank them enough for you know it's like anything isn't it it's all the background stuff People notice things when they're wrong. When everything's working right, no one bats an eyelid. It just happens, you know. The fairies arrive and things just get done. But these guys have put so much time in, you know, of their own time to, to help set it all up. I say help set it up. Set it all up. I, I've had very little to do with all that. So, these mowers are going. That's what we're kind of winding up to. We're going to the straw. Not straw. Hay is what we should be doing. Now, obviously, this at the moment, the Cavernland, this is from the Cavernland Vicon DLC, and 
it's 10 meters. The one I'm switching for is an 8.4, so it's a bit narrow, but it works better for what we want to do. Now, I did double check this to make sure you can't hook this together in a, in a triple mower setup. Um, when I say that, before anyone says, but you have got a triple mower setup, I mean kind of all on one end. Now, again, it's that situation that would it happen? 17, that's not too bad. In the real world, when you do the triple mower setups, the triple mowers are normally on the back because the rear three point link on most tractors is rated for a much higher tonnage than the front three point link. Obviously in game, you know, you need weights and things if you're going to be putting the wrong things on the wrong three point linkages. So doing a three mower setup on the front link, yeah, I mean, you probably should. But I am. <laughs> I've done it before, so please don't fall over. So what I can do is use, because I know it works, hopefully the mowers will work, 62, okay, that's not so bad. Let's close that again, close that on my way out. Yeah, so I'll use this on the Primos. So I'll have one tractor, will be running the mowers, and hopefully if it works properly, tedding and creating the hay, then this one I can then go over and do the hay pellets. Now, unfortunately, the difference between how I did my straw pellets when well, initially I did them using this, then I said, right, if you use the feed mixer, if you haven't seen that episode, I think it was alternatives or, or alternative pelletizing, I can't remember what I called it now, is that doing it that way into the feed mix, you get a one-to-one. -one. So if you get 100,000 litres of straw off the field, you get 100,000 litres of pellets. Doing it this way, this will condense. So we will go from a four to one. So if we have got 400,000 litres of hay come off that field, we're only going to get 100,000 litres of pellets. But when I say only 100,000 litres, that is going to do a lot of pellets. Oh, 100,000 litres. I mean pallets. It's going to do a lot of pallets. That's, has anyone noticed me doing that a lot while we've been doing this? Oh, man. Pellets and pallets and palletizers and palletizers and oh, pellet sell points that sells pellet pallets and... It's a nightmare. So I've got quite a few mowers here, various different ones from various different packs. But this is the one. The 301 and X8 Varia by Anthu. So let's buy that. Let's buy that. And up here on the deck, what we should be able to do with that on the back... Now, like I say, you can run a triple mower set up with a tether on the back and get your tedding. And then you can, no, that was the wrong one first. And then you can do your wind rowing afterwards to collect. That's more part, I'm just thinking actually, that tether on the back is not going to be heavy enough to support this, is it? I thought it would be all right, but I don't think it's going to be. That's a lot of weight over that front axle. So that's how we're now set up. <laughs> I can uh, just go with it. It'll be, it'll be fine. Just don't tell any health and safety people. Whoa. Once it's on the ground and mowing, it'll be absolutely perfect. If I break my three point link, I will repair it. Don't worry. And the problem I've had before is if you use a swathing setup, so whether you use a, a set of mowers that swath, or you use the, the big Krona Big M um, and that swaths for you if you go over it with a tedder as we found when I did the hay last time any size tedder will spread that swath out a little bit not a huge amount but a little bit this hay bob because it teds and whoa dog oh no you can tell I'm a dog owner now can't you <laughs> I find it's a very strange thing I don't know if I've told this story before. I probably have. I'm probably very boring when it comes to all these kind of things. I tell the same thing over and again. I was um, a postman for 17 years before I took redundancy and, and started working at the school and then I, yeah, then went on to do teaching and all sorts of stuff. Whoa, lost a bit of traction on that back axle. And as a postman, I was... Mm, attacked is the best word. <laughs> That's probably the nicest way of putting it. I was attacked by dogs quite a few times as a postman and was not a fan, I'll be totally honest, of dogs per se. Now, that was only because I've been bitten. 
I'd been attacked, I'd been chased, I'd, you know. And I, don't get me wrong, I don't blame the animal. You know, at the end of the day, a, a dog is protecting its... Hang on. What I mustn't forget to do... We are sliding, aren't we? Let me stop now. Now, on this one, I, I, I'm just thinking back a lot, a few Let's Plays ago, whenever it was I last used these. Um, so I have to kind of mention this before, but if you're new to the channel and haven't seen this, so these ones have got this little bit here. So it's on wide at the moment. When you adjust it, that swings that arm to the thin bit, and the same on the front, which is the swathing option. Um, but mine's gone blank as to how I do that. So let's do that. Right, you see them on the larger mowers? Oh, it's a bit hard to see there. Swung that to the middle one. And we'll switch to the front mower, and we'll do the same with that. So they're now on swath mode. Should be okay with that. Don't need that. So we'll turn on the front mower. We'll turn on the hay bob. Drop that down. We'll turn on that mower. We'll drop that down. So what should happen now, provided I don't do any ridiculously tight turns, we should mow. It swaths, and then the hay bob should turn that hay uh, straw into into hay. Straw? What is wrong with me? Grass into hay. But also keep it in a swath. So we are one pass hay making, but not just hay making, hay swathing. So a mow, a swath, a ted, keeping the swath, all in one lovely movement. Now there are going to be some bits it misses, because unfortunately on the turns it doesn't quite like it. I'm just wondering, do I need to adjust that hay bob at the back? There is a setting to open that arm up a little bit. Does it unfold tether? It does the that. Is that going to make a difference? Maybe. Could make it worse, I'm not too sure, but... I'm starting to try, I've just got to avoid turning. I just think it gives a wider swath, it might just take in a little bit more grass. Yeah, it's missing a little bit on the side, isn't it? Every now and again. Hmm, that could be a problem. I've never had that happen before, because I've run this behind various different bits of machinery in the past. I've, I've done the hay bob, I'm sure it did on the back of a Chrome Big M, with a trailed lifter. And that worked absolutely perfectly. Now the question is, as well, can I hire a worker? So I'm going to do a few strips across the top, and then I'm going to do perpendicular cuts. I'm going to try and avoid where I can doing bendy, curvy runs with this. If I do, they're going to be real shallow bends, because I don't want to miss any of the swath, you know? I want to make sure it's all hay. As best I can. But it is working. This, I mean, in all honesty, <laughs> this was all I set out to do on this episode. It's all I was aiming to do. Let's raise that up. straight across there. I wonder, will it work? No. <laughs> so I can't hire a worker. I suppose it was a lot to ask, really. We haven't seen the plane very much. Where is it? Just heard it. So I'm thinking, from what we got off of this grass, this field that we put into, oh, it's going off offshore. Yeah, that we got off this field when we did the silage gym. Was it 500 and I want to say 560,000 liters? Was it 560,000 liters? That should give us what 130 thousand litres of pellets should be shouldn't it something like that right, let's lift that whole rig up. I had a bit of a nightmare when I was I didn't record it I should have done really for a kind of bloopers I need to be really careful here for um for an outtake reel and while I was taking the gear over to field 10 to do the fertilising, I had the small foremost tractor 
and I had the fertilizer spreader and I'd, I'd refilled it so it was pretty heavy. Did the first run down and when it gets to the end of the field it's quite close to the cliff edge or the, the worker decided to go off the cliff, <laughs> kind of. So I took control of it, just caught it in time and it was already going down the side and because the, the weight on the back of it, the momentum, I couldn't stop it so I turned to avoid going into the water which it did, it was still in deep water but it hadn't kind of just gone completely but then I couldn't get it back up the other side the foremost didn't have enough power I just I could not get that thing to work so a uh, bit of a nightmare but all good fun and thinking about it in retrospect I probably should have recorded it and this one is going to be a little bit bendy here and there so I'm going to try and follow along the edge but you can see where we're going it's a pity I can't hire a worker so I'm going to have to just it's going to start pouring rain. I'm lucky I'm not running seasons actually because we've got rain coming. I mean, to be fair, had I been running seasons, I wouldn't be doing this now. And to be fair, it wouldn't be turning to hay straight away, would it? It would have to wait and then the rain would come and ruin all that. So. It's these. It's the big LSWs, isn't it? That's probably why I was chuckling like a child just when I did the mod review with the monster trucks. Those big old tyres. I don't know what it is about them, but I do like that. It's a really good look. And it is that interesting thing, isn't it? For however long... I mean, flotation tyres are nothing new. And, and tyres used on tractors when they're doing mowing and, and like grass work are normally smoother and more, less aggressive tread and wider, that kind of thing. But it's that same principle as you know when you walk onto ice or something like that or go onto ice that all the pressure and weight is on your feet on one point and that premise that if the ice starts to crack or anything like that spreading your weight is what can help you know that's no different with massive tires lsws and things like that spreading the weight of the vehicle to avoid as much compaction at one point or four points with, with the tires on the ground you know it, it it does make you wonder why it was never done before, you know? I know it's not new, but... It does make you wonder. Anyway, I've been waffling. There we go, that's one for the... I'm sure somebody's already put that down in the silly beatisms. I've been waffling for long enough. I'm going to get the rest of this done. A few more insights into the wonderful and wacky world of Mr. Silly uh, right, so what I want to do, switch to that, drop all that down, head forward, drop that down, and go again. I'll see you later on. back down on the docks a field seven is done with hay i did manage to get a worker to do it i say mm, yeah i managed to hire a worker on the straights the turns pff, not so good so on one of the long straights i managed to get the land rover down here we've got our new reusable egg pallets on the back that'll be going back up to the farm in a little while what we're going to be doing now is grabbing the primos just like we did the first lot of straw pellets although we did switch out so we're going to do the hay now my what did i say i was going to be getting what did i say 135 did i say i was going to get 135,000 litres of pellets so what we're going to do now is start pelletizing it hasn't started raining yet hopefully we'll get a big chunk of it done before then my concern with regard to the the capacity of this it's saying 9,000 
was it 9.7 and I was only getting 9,000. The other litres of consumption were if you go for the manual load, I've gone for the auto, but if you're loading your own molasses and your own uh, strength, strength net, um, no water is it, water and molasses, what am I talking about, it's not a baler. Yeah, water and molasses, that's where the other literage goes to, comes from. So what we need to do now, we start from here I think. Now I'm hoping the pickups can be wide enough and we're not going to have any issues. We're about to find out. We are on a slope as well, to be fair. Okay. So that compaction compression ratio of 4 to 1. I, I reckon it's going to be around there, isn't it? 130, 135. I might get lucky and get a bit more. Or we could end up with way less. I'm just really, really curious to see by the end of the build what we actually end up with. I'm thinking because potentially we're going to get over 100,000 litres, I will bring over the larger, the RYC 120, rather than bring over the 70, the Trans 70, because obviously it will fill that more than once. I will use the Trans 70 when I'm loading into the actual hopper at the, at the palletizer, but I won't use it for collection, I don't think. It just saves an extra trip, doesn't it? In my head it does anyway. Now the thing about this, same as it was actually when I bought the mill loader, am I going to do enough of this to warrant buying it? The jury's going to be out on that, it depends whether I do a load off screen or, and because it's a fairly slow machine at 6 miles now, the same speed as most harvesters, I've got a big field to do here, I've already used one that I leased for a bit of straw pellets. If I'm going to do more and more and more pellet work, then yeah, it's going to be worth its weight in gold. Part of the whole package, and if you're going to do a whole kind of setup where you've got your palletizer and you're going to run it as a business, and you know, whether it's part of a narrative, however you're going to do it, then yeah, it is. It's expensive to lease. So the, the thing about that is, if you lease it every now and again, same with any leasing, I mean, that's the thing about it, isn't it? It's the same as leasing anything in game. You start to weigh up. I might not use it very often, but if I use it a few times, that's a big chunk towards buying it. I suppose it's no different to renting a house compared to buying a house. It's the same principle, isn't it? Now, at the pellet sell point, the pallet, pellet, pallet sell point that we've placed down at the store that's being developed. The prices there were quite almost double what they were at the straw barn. So potentially a good price, we could do very well out of this. Could do very well out of this. Again, we shall see. I'm looking at now, it's now thinking. Am I gonna get way, way, way less than I'm thinking. There's a lot of swaths there. Another thing as well, and I, I, I have answered this question myself before, however, I've forgotten whether it's the same as with bales, and I think it is if I recall correctly at this point, because I've got three quarters of a stack of straw pellets bagged up on the palletizer. Well, if I put now hay pellets in, that, that pallet that's already part underway will finish off a straw, not switch over to hay until it's a new pallet, I think, if I recall correctly. I mean, either way, it's one, it's one pallet. It's not going to make a difference. So I'll have one less hay pallet or one more straw pallet it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference if the prices were catastrophically different and i'd be trying to cling on to every hay pallet i possibly could then 
it would be more relevant, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Then. So what I'm going to do also is take all the pallets off of the low loader and we'll load the pallets of straw and these probably onto it when we've got a load. So I'll do a couple of runs. Whether I'll be doing those runs, I don't think I'm going to have a chance to get those all done. The only downside, because you can't hire workers for these jobs, is these jobs, being the size of the field this is as well, are quite time consuming. Because I couldn't leave the, the worker to mow and Ted at the same time with the setup I had, especially not doing the turns properly. Oh, well, that's the other thing I was going to say. I've put it all here. Just saying, it dawned on me. I was taking the mowers and stuff back and putting them over the other side of the farm. This is my big field. This is my big field I'm going to cut for grass. It's the big field I'm going to cut for hay. So I might as well leave the mowers here and the hay bob. Now the baler can stay over there because I might end up baling more straw swaths off my regular fields and I might bale over here too. So the baler can move around, but the mowers and stuff, I don't know why I kept moving them around. It seems a bit daft really. But. So I'll have to head off and go and grab the lorry. I suppose the best thing to do would be whiz down to the docks, grab the Land Rover, take that up, bring the lorry back. It's got a pipe out. It should be high enough to go into the lorry. Good thing with that RYC120, it's not particularly high sided. So fingers crossed. No, I'm going to do I'm going to straight down this row. I might as well. I'm going to tidy up that little bit. I might as well just go down the row. When I come back up one of the next ones, I'll tidy up the extra bits. We're nearly at a full tank now anyway. I forgot as well that I'd recorded all those bits at the start of the video. I'm going to double check this. See, I don't get this. Look. Now, when I did the straw swaths, I was doing straw pellets and I said, I'm sure that pipe can raise and lower and I didn't get an option for it to come up. Now, I have. Is it down to whatever tractor you've got in the front? Maybe if the tractor's got a load of options too? But surely the pipe should still... Anyway, well, it's raised now, so that should be perfect. Uh, right, okay. A couple more jobs. See you in a minute. Let's get a few more of these swaths done. And let's see if we can get anywhere close to my, my guesstimate of 135,000 litres. last little bit and let's see how close we were we are to my initial prediction of 135,000 litres I said it was going to be there or thereabouts <laughs> I'm, I haven't actually checked the last couple of times I've moved the lorry over jumped out and the last few runs I've brought everything back to the lorry here I deliberately didn't want to see we're not going to be far off it might even be a bit over. The pelletizer, I'm going to stick over in that shed as well. We might do more straw pellets. Let's put the pipe away. I'll tuck that away later on. The moment of truth. 135 was my guess. 145. 145, 641, so 10,000 litres over. Not a huge amount out. And that could be just a variable in rounding up or rounding down when I was doing the maths in my head. Okay, well. 
that's going to go into the silo up by the palletizing hall and then we can use the 70,000 litre trailer as we did do with the straw to get the hay pellets in on the way I want to run the first lot through as well because I'm, I'm just for my own my own mental state more than anything else about whether or not that straw pallet will come off as a full straw one I don't think it will switch to a hay one I, I, I can't remember I know I would have done it before but I just can't remember oh that's as far as I got with the <laughs> I took the fertiliser spreader over to field 7 because I thought the time it was taking me to do it I was worried it would go into the next growth stage for the grass so I thought I'll get over there I'll get it uh, fertilised um, and then in between doing a couple of different jobs I completely forgot the Land Rovers bought uh, the pallet back up as well for the extra eggs that's in place and then once I've got all this underway, oh, I'll need to move the harvester down, give that a wash, and then we'll take that down. And we can finally get the sunflowers off of field three. And then before bedtime, as it's now quarter five, we're starting to lose the light. We need to go around, clean all the feed areas, double check the animals, make sure they're all watered, fed, and good for the night. those in there so then I need to get the I can use the forklift get all those off and then when I'm ready to sell I'll do them in the stacks of two we'll get them on we'll load that up right let's get that inside another thing I was doing which I realised very quickly oh is the rain literally just started so well, that's weird the wipers on that was pretty good timing was reversing through because I was doing this I was going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards so what I started doing I would grab the pallet and then from here rather than come back swing around go forwards I just swing out backwards swing round and then I could go in forwards from there unload and then when I came back out again because I was going backwards and reversing away from the pallets and it probably seems obvious if you're a forklift driver now obviously going backwards you can't see where people are of course but for me it just saved a bit of time it allowed me to do the pallets a lot quicker let's move that to am oh, I going to be in the way there if I put that right up and move forward I won't be in the way of the trailer coming in that didn't help did it I'll just get out of the way it'll be easier interesting the wipers are going indoors so uh, I suppose I could use will it hook up it might do rather than going and get another other vehicles cover on it's becoming a bit of a trailer park over here isn't it stuff all over the place got machinery and sheds all over the place as well There we go. That will do. I know we finished the last episode on on this, but I'm only going to get the first bit going, and then we will switch. Just just like I say, for my own peace of mind, my own curiosity. I won't do a full load. I think I'll put about five thousand liters in. We'll get it going. And I'll go and grab the. Oh, I can't. Can I? Are oh, you idiot? I can't take the harvester down and get on with doing field three because it started raining. So I can't harvest. Oh, I suppose I can make a start on cleaning the animals, can I? Put the lights back on in there because I turned them off.
Oh, I'm having a meh. Right, stop there. Oh, we've got a mixture. That's going to be an interesting palette. So we have got straw. I, I could have sworn it finished one off on... How would you have a split palette? It's definitely green there. And definitely the sort of more straw colour. I wonder it's what it's going to say. Will it switch it? Oh, that's interesting. What's happened there? Let's see what it says when we hook up. My money's on the same straw. Oh. I'm not so sure now. There we go. It is saying straw, that's good. Okay. So from now it should all be hay. I can crack on as I was doing before. I'm glad I got all that off that field before. The, I mean, again, I'm not running seasons. Not that it matters. It's, it's more of a kind of your own sort of headspace. I don't know how you normally play when you're doing it. You know, do you still... I mean, it's an interesting question to ask, isn't it? Do you still follow a set of rules in your head? Are there certain things you do, don't do, even though if you're not running seasons or you're not doing a particular thing, do you still set yourself certain parameters that you won't do? You know, I have got into a habit now of not having crop destruction on. Um, it's just the way I've started doing things. However, I still won't r run over a crop. I mean, I, I, as, as much as possible. I mean, you may well have seen me do it, so there'll be for some of you who have done it. Yeah, not intentionally, and I will avoid it, I'll skirt around it, you know, even though I know crop destruction's off. You know, there'll, there'll be certain things I'll still do, even though I know I don't really need to, does it make a difference? Aesthetically, it will, but do I really need to? You know, that kind of thing. So what, what kind of things do you do or don't do? Because in your head you've decided there's a kind of moral, I suppose it's a moral code, isn't it? You know, a set of rules that you're not going to break regardless okay that'll carry on now i don't think i'm gonna get three pallets worth before that runs out that hopper's probably near the empty anyway so we might get this pallet and maybe a little bit of start of a new one i can crack on with the straw the hay and then what we'll do at some point later down the line is yeah we'll do some loading we'll go and sell some but what i need to do now then as i can't do that check all our lovely livestock that we kind of again you, you get them all and you get them going and you kind of take them for granted a little bit I, I say take them for granted you know what I mean let's hook up to the mixer I'll clean out the feed areas I'll grab the wheel loader with the bucket if we need to do any feed we'll do feed Got in there? No. Oh yeah, pigs. That list of things I said we were going to do and things we can move forward. I had a bit of a weird happening today, I'll be honest. Could be the compatible... Oh, that's what it is. I'm such an idiot. Okay, I'm doing it again. I um, had the gold production pack installed. And when I went to the mod review today, there was a cow barn. What do I don't want that. There was a cow barn, and I couldn't I couldn't open up. I was trying to set the mod review up, and I couldn't get the animal pens to open. I'm thinking, I don't understand this. I haven't got any factories packs installed, nothing like that. It was the gold production. As soon as I uninstalled it, I had no problem. I thought, well, it doesn't make sense. I've had that installed since it came out on Spectacle. I haven't had an issue at all. But weirdly, in that time, 
obviously on the mods hadn't had an animal pen come out because it, of course it's going to work fine on here it's made for this app isn't it oh done it again just realize what i've done because i had the bales in place the feed will have been full won't it now it's going to the field yeah because i have the bales pushed onto there it keeps the feed topped up so that trough was already full. So what I'll do is I'll put it in storage and we can use it later on. As long as the sheep don't mind me getting in the way. And we'll clean the chickens out. We need to get Jeremy, don't we? We'll have to organise that. I apologise for anyone that doesn't like the... Uh, driving through animals sometimes you just have absolutely no choice there we go, that will do again, that's one of those weird things I try to avoid I know it makes no difference I know you can't harm them but it's, it's something I've always done I'll go into a pen and I'll try to avoid you know, the same with people when I'm going along the streets and it, make, it doesn't make a difference if you drive through a person when they're crossing at one of their crossings but I really do avoid it as much as possible Funny old world, isn't it? We may have to leave our harvesting till the morning. Planting of all the fields will go again. I should have enough now in storage, and once I've got the sunflower as well, for pig food. So as it stands, we have got 65,000 litres of wheat, 36,000 litres just over of barley, 39,000 litres of oats, 68,000 litres of canola, sunflower will have a load, no soybean, 84,000 litres of corn, got a bit of potatoes, 162,000 litres of, of sugar beet, so we've got enough to get us going for our pigs. I think what I might do is another field of corn, because they eat predominantly corn, so I know I've got a real big buffer on the corn. And then I think the rest on this next harvest cycle, I'm going to do soybean. Well, say, again, looking down those prices. Oh, I suppose, yeah, looking down that one, we've got 1790, 2067. Yeah, soybean prices are among the highest of any of those, aren't they? So I think I want to do a massive soybean, massive soybean run. Apart from one field, I'll do corn. Uh, I might do field 10, actually. I'm just trying to think of a field. Again, isn't it weird? Now I've said it, almost like a kind of crop rotation in my head in that I'm, I'm trying to avoid putting the same crop in, in the same field twice. Again, if you're not running seasons, or I know it makes a difference as well when you're running precision farming, it makes no difference when you're not. If you're not running either of those, you can put the same crop in the field time after time after time. It makes no difference. But still in my head, I'm thinking, well, yeah, but I shouldn't really, should I? Weird. And with that, I think I will continue to clear these up. We did get all of the uh, the hay off. We have got it all pelletised. We are now in the process of palletising. We will get some of those pallets sold. We'll get them loaded onto a lorry and make a bit of money on those too. And then the next load we're going to do probably a mix of straw and hay bales again. Not that I'm particularly running low. My cows aren't taking too much. That said, if I do want to increase the herds and flocks, etc., I'm going to need more of each. So it just kind of makes sense that I would do that. So I probably will as well. The day-to-day -day on Spectacle Island continues. What will happen next? Will it be wood chipping? Will it be... I'm trying to think what were the other things I was going to do. Would it be gold production? Will it be pigs? Will it, you know... What am I going to do next? I, you know, honestly, I, I have no idea myself. So your guess is as good as mine. If you have enjoyed it, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>